Hello, hello, welcome to section 1.1, hashes and signatures. Now, if you weren't in love with the hash function, you will be soon enough. Um, first, we're going to go over those lovely hash functions. So, it is a function, who would have thunk it? You have some input, put it in a machine, and it returns some output. So let's see what that means. We've got Alice, and Alice says, oh, I got this picture of a doge, I want to compute the hash of this doge. So I'm gonna throw it in, doop, doop, matrix matrix oh ba boom we've got a output our hash and we throw in our another you know maybe a YouTube video for instance we go in and do a matrix matrix and we get the hash out of that and now let's even a uh, set of transactions for instance this is what we're going to be doing with our you know blockchains and payment processor we'll put it in dr -dr -dr, computing hash computing hash up oh, we got it we've got the hash so we, we 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 here we are we've we've computed a bunch of different hashes and we're gonna we're gonna talk about kind of properties of these hash functions um very soon so but first let's talk about what are these actual hash functions because there's actually quite a large number of them this is just just a small sampling. Now, if the first one we'll talk about is MD5. Now you'll notice that this red dot, red box came up here in about 2004. There was a a uh, hash collision that was found which is no good um, now we don't so we don't use that one instead we use SHA-256 for for Bitcoin and um, Kikak for Ethereum so the, the and Blake 2 you know maybe will be used in the future who knows um, but there's a lot of really cool hash functions but don't make your own unless you know what you're doing um, now there's also this is the pre-image so the input to the hash function is called the pre-image that is an important term which you'll probably hear thrown around a lot and it's a little bit of a confusing word pre-image it's you know I don't know it's not that intuitive so our hash the hash of our pre-image has some kind of result this is our nice output and so these are just you know the output of our hash functions oftentimes it is called the hash which gets a little confusing itself um, so there are four different properties that we want to talk about with hash functions the first one is pre-image resistance so what this means is that we cannot reverse a hash function we can't given the output of our hash function we cannot determine the input we cannot determine the pre-image so let's see what that looks like visually we've got this hash and we want to say okay what is the actual content which this hash came from so we're gonna shove it put it back in our no oh, we're getting a doge out no we cannot do this this is not not allowed um, in other words we by giving by giving us the the hash we actually learn zero information about what the content what the data is that uh, generated this hash we don't know the pre-image when we are given the hash so that allows us to for instance commit to a vote and by giving the commitment, which is the hash, we don't reveal what the vote contents is. You know, there's many, many instances where this is very important. Our second property is pre-image, second pre-image resistance. What this means is if we are given a particular pre-image, we cannot find another pre-image which has the same hash output. So you know if hash of x equals y we cannot find z such that hash of z equals y so let's look at what this kind of means well we've got Alice and Alice has computed the hash of our doge and Alice has a bunch of other images one of this cute cute kitty um, and <laughs> here we go we notice that this output does not equal this output right and we we and we can't find an output that does right we no matter all the images that we're feeding in to this uh, hash function we're not gonna find one that these where these two equal and you know we can try 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 but we will never find the same ones and this is really important and of course there ex we could technically but we will never in our you know universe be able to find the same output for these hash functions with our given hardware so why is this important well if we had a kind of mean Alice come around and we said and they submitted a hash but they wanted to swap out they state they wanted to commit to the doge but instead swap out a gerbil picture instead well and have that you know equal the same uh, uh, value we this cannot happen because of second pre-image resistance so it's really important that the doge is the only image that has that output if we're going to commit to it so 
the output of our gerbil, no matter what it is, no matter how much manipulations, how many manipulations we do, we will not find the same output. So, burn, burn, pow, we got, we took care of that annoying attack. So you can't like, you can't commit to something and then quickly swap uh, uh, what you actually committed to. Now, collision resistance is a kind of general form of the second pre-image resistance. Basically, it says you can't find two different values which hash e to equal the same thing uh, no matter you know you, what those values are, right? No matter what they are. So, so if you, you you know you're given this file, you're given these ones and zeros. You know you'll never find x so, this such that x equals y. It just it won't happen unless you you know basically run your computing hardware to the end of the universe. Now, the last one is really, really important. It is the random oracle property. What that means is that the output of a hash function is identical to a random number, the output of a random number generator. So what that means is we can use this hash function as a source of randomness. Not only can we use the hash function as a source of randomness with any arbitrary input, we can even use the hash of our hash as a source of randomness. And we get a new random number, and even the hash of our hash of our hash of you know th this file gets us even a new random number and this is actually called onion hashing and it's something that we're going to go over in later sections but we can really use this kind of random oracle property and it is one of the core you know uh, 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 pieces to general computation, having a source of random numbers. This is going to be an underpinning for a lot of the mechanisms that we design later on. Um, now, these are our four properties, and with these properties, you get something that is feels like magic. You can do so much with hash functions. In fact, you can create all of Ethereum with hash functions. If the, uh, Vitalik says, you know, I want Ethereum to only rely on hash functions. That's the only crypto it relies on. So if you, you know, this is this is such a core building block that if you use it in smart ways, you can really, you know, go to the moon. Um, and so crazy. And so you now the other piece of this is signatures. Now it's actually interesting. You can actually construct signatures with hash functions alone, like Lamport signatures, for instance, which are quantum resistant. So now to generally conceptualize what a signature does is it's very similar to writing, you know, signing your uh, name on a piece of paper on a document, right? It proves that it was you who signed it. I mean, not really. I don't ever sign correctly. I was like draw Santa Claus or something. Um, but anyway, in, in, in crypto land, the signatures really work and there you have two pieces you've got the public key and you've got the private key so the public key is your identifier which is used to check the signature and that is public on the internet everyone knows your identifier and your private key only you know it it's kind of like a password if someone steals your private key then they can impersonate you and that you don't want to happen so what does this mean well everyone knows your public key hopefully and only you know your private key you keep it in your safe, right? So signature functions. There are three key functions for signatures. Generate keys. You want to create a new signature. Sign. So you're going to use your signature to you know, sign a document. And verify. Someone else is going to verify that your signature on that document checks out. So let's go over generate keys first. First, it's going to return a public key and a private key. And Alice, for instance, will call generate keys on her computer. And she will get a new public key and a new private key. These are just very large numbers written in hexadecimal and the numbers will she will publish her public key to the internet so everyone can know everyone knows this is her this corresponds to her this number corresponds to her and then she's going to take her private key and put it in a safe you know keep it safe because if anyone were to take it they could impersonate her so that's, you know, there we go. We've generated some keys. Now let's actually use those keys and sign something. So take in a message and a private key and return a signature. So we've got this message and private key, private key in the safe. We take the private key, we take the message, and we boot up our computer and plop them in to the sign function. Now our computer is going to generate a signature for that particular document using that private key. Now we're going to publish the signature to the internet and the document and then we're going to put our key back in our safe to make sure that no one else can use it. Now 
everyone can download the signature and our document if you know assuming we share it to to everyone um, now we can have verify so verify will take in a message a public key you know the identifier and a signature and return true or false whether or not that signature actually checks out so Aparna will download all three of those pieces of information from the internet she already knew the identity corresponds to Alice she got the signature she got the document and she's going to then plug those in to the verify function and the verify function on her computer will do some math do 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 and check to make sure that the signature actually checks out and so it does now if for instance the data the document were to get corrupted and maybe instead of I agree to these terms of conditions it said I don't agree to these terms of conditions then the document will you know have been corrupted and the you know uh, Aparna can use the identifier and the signature to verify no that actually is not the document that she signed so in other words you can only the signature only corresponds to a single document that you are signing or, or single you know beats bits of information which actually in the end is just a large number everything is a large number turns out um, so these are our three core functions which defines a signature these signatures can be constructed there's many signing algorithms you know you can even use hash functions for them so that's basically it these are the two kind of most critical fundamental uh, crypto tools that we are going to use to construct our central payment processor Bitcoin and a plasma chain and you know many other things state channels as well these you have to have these kind of in your brain so next up we're going to be talking about the central payment processor implementation get into a little nitty-gritty details so with that uh, you know tons of love and uh, you know hope to see you soon bye